Okay, welcome back. So, in this video I want to get this parts washer project done. It's been a little while since I worked on it, and I, I forgot how many pieces there are uh, to this thing. So, let's take a closer look and see what I've done in the meantime since the last video, and we'll see if we can get it back together. Alright, since the last video I've, I've cleaned up a few of the parts here. Um, the, the pump housing, uh, this is the, the mo one motor end housing. This is the upper pump housing, the lower pump housing, the impeller itself, the filter valve body housing, and the actual, you know, the unit housing itself. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of housings. So, and I've managed to find what I think is an acceptable replacement to the, the filter that was in here. I don't know what this is filled with. It's probably like a, like a fibrous, almost like a horsehair type filter media. And uh, I've, I managed to have this, I actually had this laying around, oop, easy. Um, this is a, it's a Napa 3080. It's intended to be a fuel filter. It's a paper, a pleated paper fuel filter and uh, had a cork on each end and I cut the, the bottom end down and, and you'll see why in a little bit. But I think that'll be an acceptable replacement for that. So I think the first thing we need to do is get this motor put back together. Now I've I put a new bearing in the lower housing already and a new and a new seal down there. So and there's a little bit of grease on that seal, so it's ready to ready to go together. But the big problem I had in the last video was a lot of backlash in the motor. And if I'm not mistaken. This is an original fiber shim from the, the top or the, the speed switch side of the armature. And then I have these two copper washers, which I'm going to use as shims for the lower end. The lower end probably originally had these fiber shims, but I think they shredded over time. Just from the, the, the gravity force of the rotor being in a vertical orientation. See, I don't think this motor was intended for vertical mounting like this, but that's how it's being used. So, I, 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 that's the reason why I don't, well, this is not thrust bearing here. This is just a radial ball bearing, but that, it's a replacement for what was there. The original bearing was not a thrust bearing either. So, it's just a design fluke of the thing, you know, designed however many years ago, and it lasted for 40 years, so if I can get 40 more years out of it, I guess uh, I guess I'll be happy. So let's get that motor put back together. Okay, so the motor's reassembled, and I've got an indicator set up here on the end of the shaft. And what I'm looking for is the uh, the amount of backlash in the in the rotor shaft of the motor. So I have it shimmed where I have about five thousandths worth of end play. So let's go ahead and and check that. Let's see if I can set you up on the stand here. Now this isn't, this, this test setup is not the greatest because the vise is only clamping on this thin aluminum ring here. So I don't know if you can see the indicator, but just me tapping, let me zoom you in on the indicator here, and just me tapping on the end of the motor, you can see how much that aluminum flexes. All right. So I'm just lightly touching the end of the motor, and you can see me moving that a thousandth without really any effort. But it springs back to zero. So I'm going to grab a hold of the shaft here, the motor shaft, and shift it. So I shifted it back. So we're, looks like, looks like we're about four thousandths worth of end play. Let me shift it back forward. And well, probably about five thousandths. So back and forward. Now remember you're not you're not looking straight on the indicator either. So but that's where we're at. I think that's acceptable. Now of course can't have too much too much end play. You don't want the uh, the impeller running into the housing. So I mean look at that. Just me touching it like that. Aluminum is very flexible. So I'm going to hook this thing up and uh, 
we'll let it run for a little while, make sure it's nice and quiet. Alright, well I've had the motor running for about an hour now, just to make sure uh, everything seems smooth and it's not getting too hot or anything. So it seems happy. I'm going to go ahead and uh, proceed with the reassembly here. I think, uh, what's next? Bolting the motor into the housing? Yeah, I think that's the next step. I already made a couple gaskets. I made uh, the housing for that, the motor flange, and the housing for the, uh, or the gasket for the pump housing. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, well, the pump assembly's back together. You use a nut driver here and turn over the shaft. I don't feel any binding. The impeller's not rubbing on anything. That's good. So, now remember, if you remember from the last video, we had all this pitting here at the bottom of this aluminum pump housing. And uh, I don't know what this was caused by. If I don't know if there's a, a certain height of water or a, there's water at the bottom of the tank and there was just corrosion on that aluminum from that or if this was in contact with the bottom of the tank which is steel and there was some kind of like galvanic reaction here I don't know but I'm gonna leave it alone I was debating on whether or not I should fill it with epoxy but you know for as deep as it is over the time I think it's just fine we're gonna leave it that leave it right alone Got the filter put back on. Got my new filter in there. Put the selector valve back on. Now I wish this was a little bit more snug than it is now. Really, it I, I might have cleaned that up a bit too not a bit too well. Uh, but I did put two new O-rings in there, and they're they, they're not exactly the right size. Their cross-sectional area could probably be a little bit larger so that there's a bit more drag, but I think what I'm going to do is put like a little link rod in this hole going up to the side of the tank just so I don't have to reach down into the liquid or down into the tank to select whether or not whether or not we want the uh, washer liquid to come out here and go up to the, the hose and the brush or come out here and go to the uh, like spray bar and that's exactly what this does it's just a spool valve essentially. Well, maybe it's not a spool valve. I'm not sure what you'd call that. Almost like a, uh, a three-way valve where the liquid can either come in here, be diverted through the filter, and then out this port, or be just diverted straight, unfiltered, to the spray bar. So, but anyway, that's back together. So I think, I think it's time to make a gasket. Make this gasket. And we can remount this in the tank. And hook our electrical up. Well, I've jumped ahead a little bit on you guys. So we got the pump and filter assembly back in, and we've got the AC wiring pulled in. Now, you remember when I disassembled this, this has this really weird method of getting the AC power to the pump through this, which is a nylon or a tough plastic tube, a stiff plastic tube, with just some compression fittings. and. Originally, it just it was just the the line in the neutral running through that tube. So I've I've kept with that idea. Um, this is the original line and everything. Of course, new AC wiring, but uh, I didn't really see any reason to change that. And if I thought this was even halfway acceptable by today's standards, uh, I'd I'd use this elsewhere. But I guess back in the 60s and 70s, this was an acceptable means to run a or supply this pump. So anyway, the AC comes in on the side here. There's a little, kind of a little bonnet cap, and there's a strain relief that pops in there. And the ground just is, uh, originally just was through or via the two screws here. So uh, I'll just reground it there. And the wiring over here, we got the line of the neutral coming in. Got the neutral to the green. Doesn't really matter which on this motor. And we're gonna. I've got a new toggle switch here on this plate with some quick dis disconnect terminals on it. So we'll go ahead and install this plate, put all the screws in, and uh, we'll be ready for a, for a test fire. 
Okay, well, I think we're ready for the first fire up here. You know, in hindsight, I guess I should have put a longer cord on it, but oh well. Uh, you know what, the only thing I have to do is I've got to cut these studs off here. I should have shown you this, but what I did was I sent the screws in, uh, the original screws, out this way from the inside, and I put the ground under a nut below this bonnet here, and I just have the bonnet held on with these two screws. Originally, the ground ring terminal was just kind of floating on the screw, which was kind of strange, so I just got to trim those off. Not a big deal. But uh, I think we're ready for a startup here. Uh, let's lift the lever up. See, I've got to put a, some kind of link rod on there. There was probably something there originally. So I'll lift it up, which should be to the, the spray bar here. And uh, let's flip the switch. Ooh, wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's quite a flow. Jeez. Huh. Uh, quite a messy operation too. I'm gonna need like a uh, a smock or something when I use this. But I guess really this is just for if you're gonna put something big in there and you just want to soak it, you let the, uh, the the spray nozzles do the work, knocking most of the heavy stuff off. Man, it's frothing up quite a bit. All right, enough of that. Sheesh. Man, that. Uh that is uh, definitely a lot of liquid moving. High flow pump. Well now, okay, let's push the lever down. Okay. And that should divert the fluid to the, the brush thing. This is a new, new brush. The original, it's the original, uh, original hose here, or the original flex, but a new brush. So let's see. Let me just set it in the handle right here while I flip the switch on. With all that flow, all that volume, I don't want the thing flying out like a fire hose. All right, let's try it now. Oh, there we go. Wow. That's a good, powerful stream right there. I guess I can clean my parts washer with my parts washer. Yeah. That's a good flow. So all of that fluid should be going through the, the filter. Oh boy, I can't wait to get some of them greasy parts from the Caterpillar in here and actually, actually do some work. Huh, I'm satisfied with that. I really am. Well, I'd say that was worth the 50 bucks. What do you guys think? It wasn't a restoration by any means. It was pretty much just get the thing running. You know, I need a parts washer. I don't need a project. So I hope you, everybody enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.